We all have a journey, and we all have a voice, and I'm truly proud of the person I have become. I wanna hold you in my arms, wanna keep you safe from harm, wanna hold your hands so tight, oh, baby, don't let us fight. If you could only see. We met, uh, actually there's a uh, get together called Chick Happy Hour here in Dallas. And I was fresh out of a breakup and friends of mine were encouraging me to get out of the house, get out of my pouty phase, get over it, move on with life. I was like, all right, but I'm just gonna play. I'm going to just find someone who's exotic, fun looking, in walks Lauren. And uh, I said, that's her right there. That's who I wanna meet. Honestly, I was not attracted to Christy. Christy the whole time was, you know, I guess standing over there and, you know, trying to, you know, get an opportunity to buy me a drink, but she could because every time, you know, she's trying to, you know, get an opportunity, I'm talking to girls are talking to me. She finally came over and said, hey, can I buy you a drink? She has a very, you know, positive energy and she's, you know, like really friendly and sweet. As the night progressed, we talked some more and um, she asked, she asked that they were they were gonna go to another um, we're gonna go to another uh, bar afterward, you know. And she asked, "Well, I want you to come." I said, "No, I can't. And, you know, I have to work tomorrow." She said, "Let's just change phone numbers." And I'm like, "Okay, we can just change phone numbers." But my whole intention was to be friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the day I met Dawn, she walked in and took my breath away even before I knew who she was. Great time, great conversation, it was easy. And I remember sitting around a fire just talking to her for hours and I really don't even recall what we talked about. From that night on, we got to know one another and we spent probably four days just really developing a friendship. And um, she went to go back to Austin. I didn't even know if I'd ever see her again. Time's been passing by since I saw you. The uh, first time that I knew I was falling in love with Debbie was when I couldn't stop those butterflies you get, you know, in your stomach. Every time I thought about her, when I saw my phone ring and I saw her name on there, I just would smile from the inside out. Everyone could see me smiling, like, what are you smiling about at work? You know, I see a text message and I'm just smiling ear to ear. And I was like, oh, nothing. I would be in meetings texting her. Um, and I just couldn't help it. I tried not to smile and I just smiled because she was thinking about me at that moment and I, it made me feel special and I just knew, I said, I can't imagine this woman not around every day so I can kiss her whenever I want. I can wake up with her every morning. I can hold her every night and I would drive door to door four hours for the rest of my life if I had to to be with her. don't think she was ready to date, you know, and I was already, you know, going on dates, you know, and my intention was just to be friends with her, you know, and so finally, um, you know, somehow our conversation led to, well, let's go hang out. It wasn't even a date. Well, me, it wasn't a date. I don't know what she thought. So I got to know her more, and I'm like, oh, wow, this girl, you know, has really, really, you know, great personality. You know, I love her personalities, and then I sit there the whole time, it's bad. I'm like, hmm, she has a pretty face. She's got a natural pretty face. Oh, I can make her over, whatever. I, I can change the outside. I, I like the inside better. Having met Don and really finding that true love and meeting my soulmate has given me this empowerment to want to share with the world that this love that I've found, this true deep passion and this true deep love for one person just wants me to be proud of who I am. She didn't change me. She changed how I viewed my life and how I felt about me 
and the decision I made about how to have a family. Her hesitation about sharing with me that she had children um, because of the negativity she had met from past relationships or from just people in general. I was ashamed of how I created my family. Don and Jason have created a family dynamic based on love, not based on blood or not based on what society says you have to do. Are you wanting to study cooking or be what? What do you want to be? I want to be a veterinarian. Veterinarian. Oh. I love pets. But most people can't see friends raising children together. Don is my best friend. I think it says a lot to our relationship to be able to live with somebody, have children with them. Are y'all getting hungry in there? Sid, can you hear me a red bell pepper? Oh, wait. Hayden, are you getting hungry? Oh, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Just one of those. Oh, you rinse it off. Are you paying attention to show? Both myself and Dawn wanted kids at a young age. It was hard for her to find somebody who wanted kids. And the same for myself. Being best friends, I couldn't imagine her going to somebody else to have children with. It's been a blessing. I love it. I'm definitely a family man, so this works out great for us, and the kids are happy. When you have children, your day never stops. Hey, hey, did you uh, make sure you blow on it? Okay, it might be a little hot. Here. It's a fruit, too. Here. Do you want apple juice? We could use some apple juice, Kaden. Hey. Hey, we have to calm down because it's time to eat, okay. or else you're going to have to go to time out. When we're together, it, of course it's easier because she can cook dinner while I do the homework with the kids, and then we eat, and then Jason will give him a bath while we spend time together. So it's a lot easier when we're all in the same house. Okay, Thank you, God, for everything you gave us. Thank you for the food. Thank you for having us spend a good time with each other. Amen. Being raised in Texas, uh, I was raised in a very strong Christian home. I have Christian roots and that has not changed. The way I was raised has not changed the way that I live my life. Although a lot of Christians do judge uh, the homosexual lifestyle, they don't realize that this is not a necessarily a choice. It's a choice like my dad chose to marry my mom. Uh, it's because he was in love with her. I'm choosing to have a relationship with Lauren because I'm in love with her. Uh, it's very natural. And I think it's very important uh, to invite people into my life to see exactly who I am and why I am this way, uh, and that it's only a small part of who I am. The church that we currently go to, they don't know that we are there as a lesbian couple. We're there because of the music and because of the message that the pastor brings to us. That they, we can actually bring those messages home and relate those to our everyday life. So we're not going to church to make a statement. We're going to church to receive God's love. Please watch over us and please make sure that, that we are safe. We went to, it was some, it was some concert and her ex-girlfriend, that was the first time she ran into her. Mm -hmm. Her ex-girlfriend with the girl that she, you know, moved on to so quickly. So, um, you know, it was okay. She was acting kind of strange. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't want to be like, um, hands. she didn't want no hands, you know, or anything like that. But then she told me, she said, hey, I'm sorry. You know, I just, I just don't want to rub it in her face. I, I didn't want to kiss on the first date. You know, I wanted to take it slow. But, but to me, like again, it wasn't really, a to date. me it wasn't a date. The third date happened, um, about two weeks later, that's when I, you know, develop a spark. Now I'm feeling something, you know, I'm not sure what it is, but I'm feeling something. And there was more great conversations and more spark. So we're kissing, making out, having great, you know, making out session. And then all of a sudden she's like, you need to go home. And I'm like, why? And she's like, because I can't control myself. I'm like, well, I can. You think I'm easy? I can control myself. I can stop us. You know, he said, no, 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 really. He should say, you need to go home. I'm going to attack you. <laughs> That's when I knew. I'm like, hmm, you know, I want to get to know him more.
right here is where I asked Debbie to marry me. Aww. I came here, got a glass of wine, we came and sat right here. Oh, wait, hold up. I drive into town from Dallas, had just come off print week, no makeup on, four hour drive, and she's all in the house. We, we need to go up and have a glass of wine and talk. And I'm thinking, we need to talk. We need to really talk. Really use those words. Mm -hmm. We what? need to talk. We need to I'm like, talk. okay, well, we need to talk about it. I'm hungry. I hadn't eaten all day. <laughs> I said, we need to talk because I needed the commitment because I felt this one right here is a runner. And I said, look, I'm not going to sit here and, and commit to somebody who's just going to run the first time and the first chance that she gets scared. She gets scared, she runs, and she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm out. out. I'm That's out. her favorite saying before. And I knew this, mm -hmm. and I'm like, look, we need to talk. Right. There is no back out plan. There is no, I'm sorry, this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, it's over. When you make a commitment like this, it should be a commitment that you're making to spend your life with someone. Now, I don't care if you're gay, heterosexual, whatever it is, you've made a commitment to a person, mm -hmm. you need to stick to that commitment. Well, I mean, I'm freaking out. Mm -hmm. My palms are sweating. She's like, well, what? What is what it? I mean? I'm like, can we wait till we get to the yeah. winery? Because I wanted to wait for not driving the car. Yeah, marry me. You know, I wanted to be in a perfect <laughs> a place. Moment. Yeah, I get <laughs> that moment. And I just said to her, I need to know that you're in this for the long haul. And so I asked her, and I handed her the ring and put it on her finger, and she didn't even look at it. No, she didn't even look at it. <laughs> she was saying so many beautiful things that no one had ever said to me before. I mean, it's like I waited my whole life for someone to, you know, tell me that. You know, I've, I've always run because only I've been the only person really that's been there for me my whole life. Of course, the ring was beautiful, but it was it, nothing to me is more beautiful than words. Mm -hmm. I knew, okay, this is the person for me, and I need to make I need to make those efforts to make this work. When you make that commitment to yourself, then you're able to make it to someone else. And that's where I had to, to be. Here's to soulmates, to relationships, and through the hard times, making it work. Sticking it out. True love. True, True love. love. True. We're expecting to hear their story about how they got engaged and uh, you know the proposal, and we're you know, kind of a little teary hearing about it. It's very sweet and special. And then Don goes and says, You what? said, I love you here, Mary here, you know, and now we'd like to bring something else into our lives, and that is YouTube. Now, is she going to start making us cry? No, well, today. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a quiet. Don't do that. No, no, no. <laughs> but <laughs> this has been, I mean, this journey that we've been mm -hmm. on together, I mean, we've all really just getting to know one another mm -hmm. and y'all have touched our lives and our souls and our hearts spiritually emotionally and we already love you guys as dear dear friends and we can't imagine starting the next journey of our life together without you guys being a part of it Aww, so sweet. i would like to take this moment and personally ask you guys to be in our wedding to stand up there for me both of you next to me I need a maid of honor, and I need a, um, so wait, so we're going to be a maid of honor <laughs> in the pink shell yes. dresses? <laughs> or the, or the metallic. We made you a metallic. I'm thinking fashion, I'm thinking, oh, fashion, right? She's like, wait a second, am I, I going to look good like, in that? <laughs> That's my girl. She asked us to be her bridesmaid, right. and we both don't like dresses. <laughs> So, of all the people, <laughs> which is fine. We, we do whatever it takes to support our friends. Absolutely. So, it's more than fine to me. It's an honor. It, it was yes. really um, a beautiful gesture for Dawn to ask us to be such a part of that. We love We'd be honored. Okay. We, we would yeah. be honored. We would love Thank you. That's yes. a yes. We Absolutely. Love Can we hug? I forget this wine stuff. Really? That is beautiful. Thank you. Y'all hug so much. <laughs> we love you. Thank you. Love it's going to be a great wedding. Yeah. We're yeah. pretty excited. I have no idea. I was told we were going to go to dinner, and now I'm sitting in a 1937 Buick with a personal driver, and I'm expecting this to be the most romantic evening of my life. As sitting there waiting for her to uh, show up to pick me up because I had no car, and all of a sudden pulls up this amazing 1937 Buick with a driver with a top hat white gloves to surprise me to pick me up. Because I dropped her off at the hair salon, said I'll be right back, honey, I'm just going to the bank. And of course, uh, you know, 
Two hours later, I'm down here setting up at Bentner's Wine Cellar and getting everything arranged. I wanted to show Don how much I love her. Hi, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Happy Valentine's. Oh, thank you, baby. Oh my God, I was so shocked. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I thought you stood me up. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. Oh my God. Valentine's been week. Oh, yeah. Good. How are you? Thank you. Are you surprised? She knows I love old yes. cars. She's going to do it, right? And so I told John, that's my wife. Well, then it didn't come around. I guess they circled around. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh. and then I was, yeah, it was just amazing. So, yes. Oh, yes, very lovely. My new husband. Happy Valentine's. Thank you. It's good to most amazing Valentine's. That's all our friends. It's the beginning. Love Thank it. Cheers. I love that top. Cheers. It's the beginning. Cheers. <laughs> Yay. Happy Valentine's. Happy Valentine's. Well, come on in. Got you. Am I getting oh. blindfolded now? Yeah. Do you trust me? Wait, wait I already they see all the food now. Yeah. Do you trust me? Else. I trust you. You should. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I've got to go to the bed. Not yet. <laughs> They're going to mess up my makeup. Okay. My. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait. <laughs> Huh? Open your mouth. Huh? Remember last year I had no control? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Heidi like me now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't be nervous. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I hope that's you kissing me. <laughs> Someone's blindfolded kissing me. Well, remember you said you would know Just if someone else? Sorry. Yeah, I would know. Okay. Yeah. Is it Leah Mar? Right. <laughs> I'll put you, I will put you. I will put you. She'll go bonk quickly on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let me turn this a little bit. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Shut up. I said that. I said it. Leah Mar. No way. <laughs> Tonight I was gifted by the invitation of coming to sing for two of the classiest, most sweetest people for their engagement uh, to be married. It's a huge honor. They asked me to come in and surprise and I'm, I'm still shocked that I was the surprise. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's an honor. If you could Um, we are everyday people. So we're passionate about each other, our love, and we want to share that in the commitments of marriage and be treated equally. What society has taught you and taught the general population is gay is not right. We work all around you every day. If we fight for your country, we save your life, we fight fires, um, and we just want to be recognized and loving who we love and accept for that. Because I took English from a Vietnamese teacher. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have a perfect English She accent. said if I would have learned English in America, yeah, I, would I would not have, have this accent. And I said, honey, if you didn't have that accent, you wouldn't get away with near what you get away with. Because anyway. she's so cute with the accent. I, uh, <laughs> like, whatever. Uh, After the war was over and the Americans pulled out, um, my dad decided, you know, that he's going to get the families 
out of Vietnam. He and my mom devised a plan that we're going to put about four, uh, four to five people on each boat, uh, pay these fishermen that own boats. My dad went on, you know, a trip, uh, the escape with him and my three brothers and my two cousins. That's the first trip. He got robbed at sea, 22 millions. The last boat trip was my uncle and I and two of my female cousins, which are his daughters. So I didn't see mom until from nine until I was about um, 13, 14 years old. As a mother, I can't imagine not seeing my children for five to six years. I can't imagine that. And it's amazing how we as Americans take for granted our freedom. I remember on our trip, we had to sneak out at night, then you paddle the boat out, you can't run the engine, paddle the boat out slowly, um, and then to a certain point where you can start the engine when they don't hear you. One and a half day, two days later into the trip, the engine stopped running, okay? And at the same time, the boat is leaking. I'm seeing, you know, the adults getting buckets of water and throwing them out of the boat, you know, every day, so it wouldn't sink. So they starting, starting having to throw out the bag of rice, rice are supposed to go, because those are the heaviest. So, um, so we floated at sea for a couple of days, and we started to run out of water. We're running out of water, and there's no food, and people are getting seasick. Uh, this is about the fifth days into the trip. People are starting to resort to drinking urines. One baby drank it, and um, she actually dies. People are playing even harder, you know. And everybody's crying, everybody's freaking out, everybody's hungry, you know, everybody's getting sick. A miracle happened. It started raining on the six days. It, was, it wouldn't just rain around the boat. And it rained hard, it didn't just rain, it rained hard around the boat. I think the seven days, the, the engine, they got an the engine to work. So it's, it's running a little bit, okay, and then it died again. And then the eight days is when a fisherman boat, a huge fisherman, a Thailand, Thailand boat, that's what they did for a living, the families. Um, came by and rescued us. Um, I had a girl actually come up to me because read the bio on our website that um, I was in the Marine Corps. She said, you know, I'm in the military. It's hard for her, her to hold a relationship. You could be in a relationship for years and you get orders to go somewhere else and they get orders to go to a different location. They can't be stationed together. And so you're torn apart because you, you have to continue to serve your country. You've made a commitment. And with a man and a woman, they get deployed together. What they want is to be able to have their partner not only deploy with them, but if something happens to them, uh, you know, they're fighting for their country. They go, they're, we're at war. If they're in war and something happens to them, they can't even, you can't even go see them in the hospital. You don't get the phone call. You're not next to kin. If there is a funeral and that kind of stuff has happened, then you have no, you have no rights. You don't get the flag, you know, where they fold the flag and hand it to the next of kin. Well, these people are fighting for our country, and they don't even have the same rights as the people that they fight next to that are straight. I don't think the military has to say, okay, you can just be openly gay in order to, for people in the military to feel secure and to, to feel equal. They just want the same rights for their family that the straight have. The government said, yeah, you have the freedom, but not really, because they still trying to control, you know, who you can love, you know, who you can't love. And, you know, at the same time, they want you to go fight for the country. But then they said, well, you, you are a second class citizen. I have a friend, the fire fighter and you know she's openly gay and um, I really admire that about her. She goes into a burning building and doesn't ask questions. She doesn't discriminate. She doesn't say well if you're gay I'll save you first and then I'll save you if you know straight people later. She goes in there without discrimination unselfishly risks her life for everybody out there gay straight by it doesn't matter to her but when she at the end of the day she doesn't have any rights with her partner 
in the same equality that she shows you as being straight. It, the law doesn't allow it. Texas does not allow that. These people fight for our country. They fight for our freedom. They fight to protect us. They save our they lives. lives. they are EMT. They're firefighters. They're police officers. They risk their life for you, and you can't even give them the same equal right. If you want to watch more of the ladies, go to lesbeproud.com for behind the scenes footage and bloopers. Join our journey. Together we can make change. The bachelorette party must come. Oh, that's what oh, they need. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.